bit different. If you have your Bibles, put a placeholder there. Go to Job, the first chapter, and we will examine verses 6 through 12. We're going to have the choir come back and give us a selection, and then we're going to get ready to worship. Amen. Amen. Amen.
forth, Lord God, and know that I am just a vessel, Lord God, to speak what thus saith the Lord. Oh God, we thank you today, God, for all your goodness and all your mercy, Lord God. And all the children of God said, Amen. Amen. All right, children of God. It's been a rough week for some people who have laid loved ones to rest. It's been a rough week for some people who have got bad doctor's reports. But I want you to know that even though you might be going through, that you're still standing. Amen. Still standing. Amen. Job is an amazing story of perseverance that when you're going through storms in your life. Because sometimes life will seem unfair. And what we learn from this powerful book is that it gives us insight on why sometimes innocent people suffer. Uh -huh. We will all ask the question, God, why? Amen. Why do things seem so hard, Lord God? Why and when is it gonna turn around, Lord? Amen. But Job was a man that feared God and the word said he eschewed evil. Amen. That means he avoided evil at all costs. Job was an upright man because he honored God in all his ways. He was a noble man because he seemingly put the needs of others before he addressed his own needs. Now here comes Satan, being busy just like he is. And Satan starts to attack Job spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Job wasn't going through because he was a bad person. He was going through because sometimes bad things happen to good people. It was Job's tenacity to hold on to God's word that got him through. In this account, we see how God knew Job was in a position that when Satan came knocking at his door, that inwardly he had everything he needed to get through the storm. God is always concerned with our well-being in such a way that he assigns heavenly beings to our lives. And on that particular day that God was speaking with the angels, old Slewfoot showed up. He comes among all the sons of God as they're giving their report. And God says to Satan, what you been doing? And true to Satan fashion, he says, I've been going up and down in this earth. I've been walking to and fro in it. He says, I've been seeking who I can devour. And God again says, has thou considered my servant Job? And Satan said, oh yeah, he looked real good to me. You think he love you, don't you? But he only love what you do for him. God says, go ahead, take your best shot. Do whatever you want to with him, because I know who my servant is. But Satan then realizes that God had the upper hand. And God knew Job's story. God knew Job's ending before Job's beginning. But Satan starts out anyway. He starts out on a mission to ruin Job. And he starts attacking Job with everything he got. And it's only by God's permissive will that this is happening. Job is standing strong through the tragedy and afflictions that he faced. But what he goes through will make any sane man lose their mind. Job is worshiping God. His day starts out just like many of us. We got a song in our heart and a praise on our lips. And he's minding his own business, thanking the God that he serves. And all of a sudden, somebody comes in and brings him a word and says that while your oxen were plowing in the fields, the seedlings came against them and have slain your servants and took the oxen. And he says, only I alone have escaped to come and tell you what happened. Bad news travels fast. And before he could finish his words, another messenger comes in. And he said the Coldings had three bands of soldiers. And they have taken all your camels and killed all your servants. And only I alone have escaped to come and tell you what happened. Lord, it's getting rough. As Joseph is trying to gather all this information, before he can even get his composure, somebody else comes running through the door. And they said, a great fire has come down from heaven. And all your cattle have been burned up. And before he could even utter another word, 
somebody else walks through the door. And since there's a great wind that has come from the wilderness, from the four corners of the earth, and it has blown down the house, and all your children have perished. Job had 10 children. He was a wealthy man. He didn't want for anything. He was a pious man. But Satan was trying to make him out to be alive. When Job hears all this, the Bible says he tore his clothes. He got up and shaved his head. And then it says he fell down and worshiped God. He worshiped God when he was going through. Job tribulation in one day was more than the average person can take in a lifetime. On four separate occasions, he's confronted with news of losing his wealth, his children, and then finally his health. Because Satan, y'all know he don't ever stop. He comes back again and not only takes everything that Job got, but now he attacks his body. The Bible says that he attacked Job with bowls from the crown of his head to the very soles of his feet. It's hard to imagine losing one child. But Job lost 10 children at one time. Job said, man born of a woman is but few days. He said that there is all, all of us have sin in our hourglass. But one day our sin is going to run out. That's why we all have certain seasons in our lives that we have to pay attention to. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says to everything there is a season and a time and every purpose under heaven. The Bible says that there's a time to be born and a time to die. But Solomon said that God has set one over the other. In all this, Job still praised God. Because Job believed in his heart that God is too wise to make a mistake. For some of us, it's hard to pray when you're going through. For others, it's the evidence that I am where God wants me to be. Because we believe in our heart that Satan wouldn't be attacking us so hard if God didn't have his hands on me. Satan is messing with Job so much that people are beginning to wonder, are you really who you said that you was? The news of Job's calamity has traveled so fast that it goes to his three friends and they have come from afar to come and comfort him. And they show up and when they see Job, they see him in stark contrast to who they know Job to be. Job, again, was a wealthy man. But when they look at Job, they see he has nothing. They, Job was a healthy man. But when they look at Job, they now see him stricken in his physical condition. But Job didn't let what they look, how they looked at him stop him from still praising God. Even though there were other opinions that Job must have did something wrong, Job still held his peace. Job let them assume while they were speculating that if you're a holy man, why all this hell break and loose in your life? Now let me say that again. These were his friends, and they were close to him. And they presumed that he could not be as holy as he said he was, or as righteous as he said he was. Because God, who is too just, would not allow something so unjust to happen in his life. But oh, how wrong they were. Job finally breaks his sounds after sitting down for seven days. And when he breaks his sounds, he begins to tell them how miserable comforters they are. Oh, yes. Yes. He tells them that you didn't come and give me no words to lift me up, you didn't talk no good words about who God is how just God is. All you did was offer your opinion about what you think I got going on. Even Job's wife didn't comfort her husband in his time of need. She looked at Job and said, why don't you just curse God and die? Job called her a foolish woman. Job said that even though I'm going through my storm, God is still my umbrella. How many people know that God is good? goes back and forth trying to convince his friends that I don't know what's going on in my body. I don't know why I'm losing everything I got. I don't understand what's happening with my children. But I know God is with me. Job is declaring that even though I don't understand, I won't complain. Job said, 
I know it's not because I did anything wrong. Because I know I'm still on the lower side. Satan used every occasion to move people against you. But people will have known you all your life. But the moment that one person says one negative thing about you, everybody gonna jump on the bandwagon. Satan comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. Satan's problem was enough was never enough. He always wanted more than what he could have. And because of his discontentment, Satan has waged war on every believer. We all have an inheritance in Jesus, if Jesus is Lord over your life. But there are times what we call bad, God calls purpose. Let me say that again. There are times what we call bad in our lives, God calls purpose. Job understood that Psalms 24 and 1 says that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, and the world, and they that dwell therein. In other words, Job was saying, God, how can I get mad and complain to you? You own the whole world. All this stuff is yours. I only got it because you gave it. Job said, God, give it, and God, take it away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. The Bible tells us that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance, and that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And even though Satan might be buffeting at you, don't you lose sight that God is still with you. Job spoke affirmation after affirmation to himself. He affirmed that his trust was in the God that he served. His mindset was somehow this will all make sense in the end. He said, I don't see how now, but I know that God has always provided for me. His mindset said to him that, Every person, if you're born of a woman, is going to go through some suffering sometimes in life. And sometimes we internalize everything we go through. We will begin to think that what's happening in our lives is a result of us being outside of God's will. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it's sin. Your child could be locked up, and you would think that you did something to make God angry. But can I tell you, maybe God was just trying to get your child's attention? That God was sparing him from a life that you didn't know that he was going to enter into? The Bible says that you could be you could be struggling through your finances. And you'll be saying that God is upset with me. Maybe God is trying to help you understand that the first tenth of everything he gives to you belongs to him. The Bible says that God commands that we bring all the tithes and offers into his house. The Bible says that everything that God increases me with, I'm supposed to bless him with a portion of. My body might be going through not because I did something wrong, but just because I'm going through. Your car might break down not because you didn't take care of the maintenance, but just because it ran its course. But I want you to know you're still standing today. Satan touched Job's body, but God had already touched Job's life. God was in relationship with Job. And when you're in a relationship with somebody, you, the person you're involved with, you already know what they're capable of. God knew Job's frailties, and God knew Job's strength. God knew Job, just like God knows you. There are three things I want us to walk with today, and that is that no matter who you are or where you are at in your life, I want you to remember these three things from Job. The first thing is that God sets the limitations on how the devil can move in your life. Oh yes, God got parameters. God determines what Satan can do and what he can't do. Satan is in the messing business, but God is in the blessing business. God would have never allowed Satan to attack Job unless he knew Job was in a position to pass the test. Y'all ain't catch that. Because y'all be walking around all upset, moping with your head down, wondering where your God is, and your God is still right there. God is saying to you on the inside, you got everything that you need. My son already died for your sins. What more do you need? You got the victory. He said, pick up your head and increase your faith and know that I am on your side. The second thing is that Satan will, what Satan uses to attack us God will use to bless us. What Satan used to attack us, which we call curses, God will use to bless us. God 
God doesn't set any of us up for failure. If my test is more than I can bear, then God knew how long I could carry that burdens. Because burdens are those things that have been placed upon you, that when you carry them, they weigh down your life. That's why you have to release what you hold on to. Our job is to get through, not to hold on to. In life, we all have experiences of some sort of suffering. But can I tell you that your misery will somehow become your ministry? The third thing I want you to remember is that God will restore me and give me double for my trouble. God himself asked the question, has thou considered my servant Job, the one that fears me and hates you? God knew the outcome from the beginning. But just because God wants Satan to know, and just because God wants you to know, that you can make it. When Job sits down and addresses his friends, he's pleading with them. Not in the sense that he's trying to convince them, but he makes a statement. He says to them, his friends, he says that I'm going through, and you act like I'm on trial, but I committed no crime. You bring all these allegations against me, and I have enough to defend myself against a judge who no one can rightly stand before. He says it's Satan and his crooked self that's the prosecutor. It's him that's persecuting me. He said, but you have convicted me without even trying me. Job is lamenting the fact that he had to go through. But then there's something so amazing that clicks in Job's spirit and that knocks me off my feet. Job realizes that though I can't convince you, I know that there's one who's greater who can testify of who I am. Job says, I know my Redeemer lives. And he said, I know that one day my change is going to come. Job said, it might look bad right now. He said, but I'm still standing. He said, I won't complain. Job contends that God is over all creation. And everything under his throne is subject to his rule. Job is saying, I wouldn't ask God. He said, where can I go to ask God? Where can I search for him that I can even protest my cause? Job realizes that his consolation is only in fearing God and hating evil. Job says, that's why my faith is not in vain. Because I know that somehow God will balance all of these things out. He says that my good days will outweigh my bad days. He says the storms might keep on raging in your life. But Isaiah said, whose report will you believe? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings of eagles. They shall run and not faint. They shall walk and not be weary. You still stand. I want you to remember today that storms gonna come in your life. But you gotta remember storms don't come to stay. They're always passing through. When a storm hits landfall, they either increase in speed or they decrease in category. But either way, they eventually die down and go back out to sea. What am I saying to you today? Don't get all out of whack with what's happening in your life. It's a temporary situation. It's not permanent. Storms are a way of God getting our attention. What I love about Job is that God, Job did not appeal to man, but he appealed to God. Satan's position was this. He tried to say to God that I know you think that he's a good servant, but the only reason he blesses your name is because of what you give him. Because you made him wealthy, because you gave him sons and daughters, because you gave him servants. But that's just like Satan. Always plotting, planning, and scheming. Always trying to pull somebody down. But the word says, thanks be to God that we got the victory. That means that God has secured every believer. And that nothing that the devil does can end my life before God says it's time. I want y'all to catch that point. Because some of us have been diagnosed with some things that are rare. Some of us have been diagnosed with some things that the doctor says that you got to set time. But all time belongs to the Lord. Jesus said he doesn't even know the times that the Father put in his hand. Man may give you a prediction, but man know how to find himself. I believe that God is not slack, any, slack concerning any of his promises. Anybody believe that with me today? I believe that if God says 
everything that he will do and that I can count on. I believe that God is real. I believe that God spared me and keeps you. I believe that just because things might look bad, it don't mean that God ain't good. That's why I won't complain. The devil will try to trick your mind into making you think it's too late to wait on God. But you got to put the devil out of your mind. I believe that God has all power in his hands. I believe that God is the Alpha and the Omega. That God is the beginning and the end. I believe that God is my Jehovah God. That he is the Lord my provider. I believe that God is my Jehovah Shalom. He's the God of my peace. I believe that God is my Jehovah Rapha. Because he is my healer. you with more than what you have. Job's desire was always to be right with God. And being right with God always included Job making intercession for his children. Because he believed that they might have done something that was outside of God's will. And that's just what a loving father does. He sacrifices. And that was actually a foreshadowing of what was to come. Because Jesus sacrificed for us. He always intercedes for us when we're outside of the Father's will too. The historical account of Job tells us that God answered Job out of the storm. Y'all ain't catch that. If you're going through your storm, God is going to speak to you. He will answer you. Whether it's through prayer or through his word, he will speak to you. Job asked a question that many of us don't even think about. Job asked the question that if a man dies, can he live again? If we got Jesus, the answer is yes. Job's reference and his reference of God's word is what got him through every tragic situation that he faced, every calamity that he went through, every difficulty that he had to endure. And I want you to know that if you hold on to God's word today too, that same thing will happen for you. The Bible says that Job lived 140 years after all this. 
that he had 14 generations and that he was full of life. The Bible says that eventually once God speaks to Job, he tells Job, where were you when I did all this? And when God gets through explaining things to Job, Job now says this. He said, I have heard of thee by the hearing of my ear. He said, but now my eyes do see, Lord, that all this is your hand and work. My suffering and my good times. Because God is not unjust. And if you are in a storm today, and you're looking to be comforted, just like Job, you got to trust in the word. You got to believe that God is on your side. And you got to believe that somehow it's still going to work out for your good. Job, after losing 10 of his children, all of his wealth, his finances, and even his health, I imagine it was hard to even get up. But Job still mustered the strength somehow to understand that God is real. He made his petition to God. He trusted in God. And I want you to understand all over this place today that if you believe that God is real, you ought to stand up on your feet. If you believe that God deserves your thanksgiving today, you ought to give him praise. If you believe that what you're going through and what the doctor said, but that God can still provide a miracle, you ought to give God praise. Let's praise God today. Let's know that we can bless the name of the Lord at all times. I want you to know you still stand and that God is able. And that if you fall down, God will pick you back up. And that nothing, nothing, nothing that the enemy does in your life will ever stop where God is going to take you to. It won't stop what God has for you. Even though Job only relief when his body was afflicted was to sit down and take a pot shear and scrape the pus from his sores. And all that, he could have cursed God. But Job said, I won't complain. Because Job knew that God is able to do all things. Yeah, he is. He is. If you're in the house today, yeah, this was a quick lesson, but it was a good lesson. It was a quick lesson, but a good lesson. It was a needed lesson. You know why? I get many phone calls during the week about people who are tired of going through. And often, they'll be on the other end of the phone saying, I don't know what to do. And when I'm talking to people, I'm always pointing them back to Jesus because he is the center of your joy. It is only Jesus that gives you life. It is only Jesus who keeps you when you're going through. If you're out there today and you have not accepted the Lord and the pardon of your sins, make your way down here today, please. Come on down and let's get right with Jesus. Job's friends thought they understood. But God told Job to pray for them in the end. Because they were mistaken about what they thought they knew. And sometimes people will try to condemn you for what they see you going through. But God is still on your side. Amen. Amen. Yes. If you're out there today and you do know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but you're looking for a church home that you can connect to, why don't you come on down today? Come on and connect with this branch of Zion. A place where you can grow. A place where you can feel the spirit of God move. Come on down today. And if you are in the congregation today, praise God. whatever reason. You don't have to explain. But if you'll just lift up your hands where you are. If you want to be saved today, God sees you. My plea to you today is to get right with the Lord. 
I want you to join this church, but I want you to join Jesus. Amen. If you're out there today, just lift up your hands. Come on then. Y'all can do better than that. Jesus' name. 